gear. Um, just some notes before we begin the webinar. Uh, you can participate either by using your computer microphone and speakers or dialing in by telephone. Um, during the presentation, I will keep everyone muted since there's a lot of people uh, in today's session. Um, you can change how you're participating, either telephone or microphone and speakers, in the audio section um, of the GoToWebinar software, which should be in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. If you have any questions during the webinar, uh, please feel free to type those into the chat panel or the questions panel, and Becca will pick up uh, any questions that you have. At the end, we will open it up for question and answer, and there is a button uh, in the GoToWebinar software, the raise hand button, and once we're uh, at the Q&A session, uh, if you click that button, I can unmute you and you can ask your question to the group. Um, that way we don't unmute everyone all at once and uh, cause a lot of noise and confusion. So that's how we'll handle um, the webinar. Uh, so today's webinar, and there should be a graphic there, but for some reason it's not showing up, but this is uh, about Zintech's Mac and a new reading feature that we're going to be uh, debuting as part of uh, one of the next Zintech's Mac updates. Uh, my name is Derek Bobe. I work here as our technical product manager in our sales and marketing department. So this new tool, um, let's talk about that because that's what we're going to focus on here today. And oh, there it is. <laughs> There's the graphic. This was a little bit delayed. Um, so let's talk about what this new reading tool is. It's a limited time beta feature that's going to be included in all ZoomText Mac products. And what we mean by beta is that it's still in development. Okay, it won't be the final version of the tool that you'll see, uh, but you'll have a chance to evaluate it for a limited time um, in the product. And, and we'll talk about um, our schedule and release dates and things like that. What this tool allows you to do is easily consume web-based content. So when you're on uh, a web page, a lot of time there's a lot of extra content like ads or you've got sidebar navigation and things like that. So it's very difficult to extract just the important information. So what this tool is going to do is take just the important information and read it back to you, um, actually using the built-in voices um, on the Mac. Uh, the default voice I think we use is Alex, which if you've used VoiceOver before, uh, will sound very familiar to you. Um, this tool we've also developed to be able to read other uh, text content as well. So you'll be able to read text from the clipboard, or there's a feature which allows you to grab all text from an application window, and I'll, I'll be demonstrating all this to you, um, like a message in the mail app, for example. It's kind of like a select all and read um, feature. So it's got some similar or similarities to um, our background reader feature in ZoomText 10 on the PC. It's a little bit similar to that. So this is what the tool is going to do, and, and I know many of you are waiting for us to you know, implement um, more screen reading type features into the product, and we are working on those uh, and other reading tools as we speak, but um, today we're, we're focusing on this tool um, that's going to allow some easy reading on the web, which will be one, again, that you'll see debut in the product uh, here over the next couple months. So uh, the whole idea behind this feature was to make it easier to read content on the web. Okay, um, if you've used Doc Reader before on the web with ZoomText, you'll see that it just grabs everything. Um, which is a great user experience. We really wanted to make this easy to do. So that's um, what the tool is about. And um, I think from here, we're going to jump right into the live demonstration of the tool. And I'll go through uh, some examples of how it works. And um, we'll go from there. So first thing I'm going to do is obviously go ahead and start ZoomText. Let me double click on its icon here. Okay. And so I've got ZoomText running. And one thing you'll notice um, is that under the ZoomText program menu, once you have this version of ZoomText, you'll see an option here that says Open Reading Window. Um, this text may change, but for right now, that's what it will say uh, in the version that's going to have the beta of this tool. Um, but before I go into that, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open Safari. And I'm going to go to Google News and just grab an article um, that I'd want to read. So I'm going to go to the sports section, and uh, here we go. Choose this article about the Blackhawks and their last-minute win. For those of you that are fans of hockey, that was quite an interesting finish. 
Um, so I've got an article here that I would like to read. And very simply, there's a hotkey I can use when I'm in Safari. Um, currently, Safari is the only supported browser with this feature. But if you press Command Option R on the keyboard, this is going to retrieve the content from the web page and start reading it back to me. Retrieving Blackhawks Furious Game 6 Rally win Stanley Cup title. Members of the Chicago Blackhawks celebrate after defeating the Boston Bruins 3-2 in Game 6 of the 2000. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause this and uh, go to the full screen view. Right now, we're in a windowed view um, of the reading window. And you can see here's the text from the article. We've got playback controls and other settings. But I want to move this to full screen so you can see everything in the interface by clicking on the Expand button. So now we disable Zoom Text magnification. And this kind of looks like Doc Reader from Zoom Text on the PC. Um, so here, um, you're going to see it's highlighting a uh, paragraph of text as it reads. I paused it by hitting the space bar. But if I hit that again, it'll resume reading. Members of the Chicago Blackhawks celebrate after defeating the Boston Bruins 3-2 in Game 6 of the 2013 Stanley Cup Final at TD Garden. Photo, Brian Lurdy, USA Today Sports, Boston. The Chicago Blackhawks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause that again so you can see that the block is moving from text element to the next one. Now, the text here is a little small, so if you look up on the toolbar, there's an icon here that allows me to adjust the text size, um, among other things. So if I click and drag this slide bar, um, you can see behind the window the text is starting to get larger, so I'll increase that. And the other cool thing we've added is there's an option here to adjust the size of the highlighted text. So if I wanted the highlighted text to be a lot larger um, than the normal text to kind of make it jump out, I can do that. Um, I'm just trying to play with this to kind of get the right impression here. So you can make that highlighted text size a little bit bigger. Uh, you can do things like adjust line spacing to make uh, less or more room in between lines. And you can also adjust uh, the left and right margins as well. So. Um, lots of customization available. And, and none of these um, options or settings right now are final. Um, for example, the colors, um, all of this is, you know, we're looking for feedback on a lot of these items. So, you know, if you want to see us add other colors um, or different fonts, I mean, there's a very limited font face set here. Um, but please let us know. You can email, um, what is it, ZTMAC at ZoomText at AISquared.com. Um, and, and you'll have more information once, once you see this product out in the field, but you can email us any feedback, and that's ztmac at aisquared.com. So none of these settings are final, like I said. I'm um, just showing you you can do things like change uh, your text size, highlighted size, margins, and things of that nature. You can also adjust your speech, uh, the speed, volume, and voice, whatever voices you have installed on the machine. Um, and you can even hear a sample as well. Blackhawks Furious Game 6 Rally win Stanley Cup title. Okay. Um, you can also navigate by uh, paragraph, just using left and right arrow keys. Win Chicago Trailing 2-1. Brian DeKel, Patrick Kane was selected at the Consmod Truck win Chicago Trailing 2. Okay, so left and right will go between previous and next paragraph. The up and down arrows will bring you to the first and last paragraph. So if I hit the up arrow. Blackhawks Furious Game 6 Rally wins. Brings me to the beginning. Down arrow will bring you to the last paragraph of the article. Photos. That's the 2013 Stanley Cup font. Okay. Um, if you hit the Enter key uh, at any time, it will replay the current paragraph that's being read. Blackhawks Furious Game 6 Rally. Remember Boston. We're Chicago trailing 2-1. Patrick. So if I was on this paragraph and I was paused, if I hit the uh, Enter or Return key, it will repeat the reading. Patrick Kane was selected as the Consmod Trophy winner. He scored seven goals in his past eight playoff games. The Blackhawks. Okay. And all these hotkeys that I'm telling you about, don't worry about memorizing these for right now. Um, also, there are toolbar buttons all the way at the top here that do the same function. So you've got you know, first paragraph, previous paragraph, the play button, next paragraph, last paragraph, uh, a repeat button to repeat the current text as well. Okay, and we went through some of the option buttons here to adjust your text size, um, your speech settings, and these two buttons over here is where you want to retrieve content from, from the active web page or from the clipboard. Um, another kind of cool feature that we, we're going to incorporate here is a share button for Facebook. So you could say, hey, I just read this, and I don't know if this is linked up yet, but 
Um, you could go to Facebook and say, hey, I just uh, I have to be logged in. It'll um, link to the article that you're reading so you can share that on your Facebook feed. I just read this article with uh, Zintex Mac. Uh, so that's what that Facebook button does. So I'll just go back into that real quick. So again, there's the full screen mode and um, the windowed mode. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're in this windowed mode, the zoom text magnification will be magnifying over the top of everything else. But while this is reading, there's not going to be any visual tracking of uh, where the text is being read. So for example, if I start reading, it's going to be reading things off screen. Okay, That's just how this is going to work when you're in the non-full screen mode. So that's some of the benefits of being full screen. Granted, you're not magnifying everything, but you can change the text sizes. The buttons are high contrast and pretty large. Um, but in the windowed mode, it won't be able to track everything uh, as you might expect. But some of the cool things that you can do in this windowed uh, mode, if you have your application uh, windows resized a little bit, is I can actually left click and drag links into the reading window. So if I wanted to read this article about Wimbledon, I can simply left click and drag the link over to the reading window, drop it in there. Retrieving content. Wimbledon 2013, defending champion Serena Williams advances to second round after defeating Mandy Manila. Here you can see that it started reading it. So all I did was drag and drop that link into the reading window. Um, if I close the window, there's two ways I can open it again. Uh, one is Command Option O. The other is, as I showed you in the beginning, there's the Open Reading Window option under the ZoomText Program menu. Um, and again, so you need to have your application windows non-maximized, otherwise you won't be able to drag anything behind it. But the nice thing is, again, while you're in this mode, um, you can drag and drop uh, links into the reading window. Retrieving content. These 2013 brass alternate uniforms are less red, more black. Okay. So you can see it's really easy to use. I mean, drag and drop is about as simple as it gets. Um, now, there's a few other things that you can do with this tool. Uh, as we mentioned at the top. Uh, so let's go to, I'm going to go to the AI squared blog. Type correctly here. Um, one of the things was you can read information that's in the clipboard. So for example, if I uh, copied the text here, okay, and I'm selecting text and hitting Command C to copy, I can read what's in the clipboard by pressing Command Option P and Paul. Independence Day Sale by Rebecca White on June 25th, 2013. In honor of Independence Day, we'd like to give you a discount on our entire product line, tools that are... Okay, so you can see that this is the text from the blog article here. Um, it opened it up in the reading window, and it's starting to read it um, as you can hear. So, again, you could read pretty much any content um, with this tool as long as you can copy it. Again, much like the background reader in Zoom text, as long as you can copy the text, you'll be able to read it in the reading window, um, either the uh, full screen or uh, windowed mode. There's one more hotkey. If you're in an application, I have to find it here on my doc. I don't know where it went. Um, oh, here it is. If you're in an application like Mail, and let's say you wanted to read this email message, the entire thing, if I open the message, there's a hotkey that, that can grab all of this text and read it to me. So instead of me using the mouse, selecting, copying, and hitting Command Option P, I can do this in one step by hitting Command Option G, which is our grab hotkey. It's going to select all the text in the active window, copy it to the clipboard, and then read it with Zoom text on one step. So again, Command Option G. Dear Douglas, welcome to iCloud Mail. Your email address is zoom.net at icloud.com. With iCloud Mail, new messages are pushed to your... Okay, so you can see I was able to do that in just one step. So um, pretty simple to use the tool. I mean, there's only three or four different hotkeys. You can use it with the mouse. Um, and again, just to, just to reiterate and go back here, so if you're in Safari and you wanted to read um, the current web page, all right, so I've got an article open now that I, would, that I want to read, it's Command Option R. Retrieving content. Credit card alerts. 
Saving you precious time. I've talked about how small tasks can consume a lot of time when you're visually impaired. Keep it. Okay, so that's, it's really easy. And it's going to extract all of the article information. Notice that it didn't read any of the tabs up at the top. And when we were in the um, previous article earlier, let's see if I can get back there. Uh, let's go forward one more. We were reading this article on the USA Today page about the Black Fox. I mean, look at all the content that's here. You've got all these different categories at the top, related stories, uh, and a whole bunch of other links. Notice that none of that information came through when we started Read with Zoom Text. It took out all these extra links. I mean, there, there's a lot of extra stuff on web pages that I'm sure um, a lot of you folks are, are aware of because visually they're very noisy. So um, again, one of the main um, reasons we built this tool was to make reading content on the web easier because it is visually distracting and visually noisy. So, you know, if I started read with Zoom text from here. Retrieving content. Blackhawks Furious Game 6 Rally win Stanley Cup title. Okay, it starts from the title here and it just has a text in the article. So none of that extra information um, is going to get in the way. All right, so that's a quick demonstration of the tool. Um, again, it's pretty simple. There's basically three inputs that you have, or two inputs really, content from the clipboard um, or a web page, either the active web page or you can drag and drop links. And again, there's two different, um, two different view modes. There's the windowed mode, okay, where ZoomText is magnifying on top of everything and other applications that are running. And then the full screen mode, which is kind of like Doc Reader, where you are just looking at the reading window interface and Zoom Text is not magnifying anything. All right, and just to show you these buttons, if I click the copy button here, this will just read within the uh, clipboard currently. Dear Douglas, welcome to iCloud Mail. Your new email. Okay, so that was the last thing that was in the clipboard. Remember, we did the grab command, which selected everything, copied it, and then read it. And then the web button will read the active. Uh, active web page, or it should. It might not have focus right now. Okay. All right. So that's a short demonstration of the feature. I'm sure you guys have uh, questions, but there's a couple other things we should mention um, before we open it up to Q and A. And so, you know, a couple of FAQ type questions. I'm sure people are wondering when are you going to release this. Um, our current schedule is we plan on releasing this beta feature sometime uh, in July or August. And again, so it'll be in every copy of ZoomText Mac, even the trials. It'll come as an update if you're currently running ZoomText. Um, and so it'll just be available. You'll have um, kind of a countdown to say how many days you have left to use the feature, when it will expire. We're really trying to evaluate and get some feedback um, on how we can implement this tool or integrate this tool into the product. And many of you might have noticed if you are uh, current ZoomText users on the PC platform, you know, this is not doing word highlighting. Okay, so it's a little bit different than App Reader, and uh, we are looking at adding word highlighting right now. It highlights blocks of text or par blocks of text or paragraphs, but we are targeting uh, having a word highlighting feature for our next Zoom Text Mac major release, not a maintenance release, but our ma next major upgrade. Um, that date is to be determined. That's that's further out. Um, and just so people know, a lot of the reading tools that we do on the Windows platform um, may or may not be possible to do on the Mac. The platforms are completely different, and the information that we have access to um, varies greatly amongst the platforms. So our whole goal in this is to provide tools and features um, to help make it easier for you to use your computer on both platforms. Again, they may not appear exactly the same. They may not work exactly the same but the idea or the concept on how to uh, consume information on the computer when you have low vision um, is, is really what we strive to develop in this product. So um, I'm sure everyone has other questions. You may have um, questions that aren't necessarily related to the reading tool today, but um, we've reached the end of the webinar and there's just some contact information up there for sales and support, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people already know about. So again, um, this tool will read web content and it will read information from your clipboard. And we're going to be debuting this as a beta feature uh, in hopes of getting feedback on how to finalize some of those things like 
you know, the font colors, the font faces, or any other feedback that you might have. So um, now is the time to start asking some of those questions. And uh, just to reiterate at the top, I said since we have a lot of people logged in here today, rather than unmute everyone all at once, if you'd like to speak up, just click the raise hand button uh, in the GoToWebinar software and I'll unmute you and you can ask your question. Uh, otherwise, you can just type it into the um, chat panel or the questions panel and uh, we'll pick it up from there. Um, let's see. Ty asked, after using the web tool and listening to the main content of a web page, how easy is it to jump to the noise areas if you want to listen to related content? So there's no easy way to do that within the reading window because we're stripping that information out. We're just getting the article content. If you wanted to listen to that other information, you could do one of two things. One is select it with your mouse and copy it to the clipboard and read it that way. Or you could use the grab command like I showed you in the, um, the mail message and just select all of the text on the web page um, and read it that way. So that would be one way to do it. Um, it's a little bit more, you'd have to skip through more content maybe, you know, using left and right arrow keys, um, but that's one way to do it. And uh, I can actually demo that to you real quick if you guys want to see that, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, so I'll go ahead and close that out. So we've got our window here, and if I do the grab command, it's going to select all copy. USA Today, X, News, Sports, Life, Money, Tech, Travel, Opinion, 82 Degrees. Okay, so you can see it's reading everything, all those uh, headings across the top. Let me make this full screen. Um, Mother, media, with search, lock, George Zimmerman, closed, 30, Blackhawks, last, Kevin, 10, Trump, store. So really, you'd want to use End of article. the arrow keys to get through um, all that information uh, to get through the content. It's not as elegant as if you were just trying to read the article text, um, but that's one way that you could do it. One thing I, I just wanted to add as well, I don't know if you've demoed this, but if you copy a, a URL and paste that in, it will read the actual article content. So it's not like a copy-paste and it's just going to read aloud that link to you. It'll know that it's the link that you actually wanted to read that article. I want to show that. Yep, so I'll do that. So I've got a link here of an article. I'll do copy link. And then we open the reading window, command option O, and I can just hit command V to paste. Retreat video. Investigator Search Creek near NFL Stars Home for the latest on New England Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez. Okay, so it's actually reading the article text. Remember, I just copy and pasted the link. Now it went to that page and it shows me the URL here um, that I pasted in and it starts reading that. Okay, um, there are a couple other questions whoops, that I noticed in here. Um, one person asked if it can read PDF documents. And uh, the answer is it will read PDF documents as long as you can copy the text to the clipboard. So um, you can even use the grab command, which would do a select all and then read, uh, which, again, command option G would do that. So as long as you can copy the text from the PDF, um, it will work. Now, remember, sometimes PDFs are not created correctly. So it might look like you can copy it, but there's no text in the document. They haven't prepared the document correctly. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's not going to perform OCR or something like that if it's just an image. Um, it looks like, Tolliver, you had your hand up. Um, I just went ahead and unmuted you, so go ahead and ask your question. OK. Uh, my question was uh, the action you just performed with the copy link, mm -hmm. uh, are you able, is that the same as the click and drag method that you uh, demonstrated earlier? Yeah, pretty much it's the exact same thing, um, except you can paste the link in with the keyboard rather than dragging it into the window, which might be a little cumbersome if you don't have your application windows organized uh, a certain way. Okay, and when you do that, uh, the click and drag into the reading window, yeah. uh, are you dragging it uh, into the URL or are you just dragging it into the window? Nope, just anywhere in the window. Okay. Okay. Yep. Good question. All right. Let's see. Um, other questions that that people might have, and and again, 
you know, feel free to click that raise hand button if you want us to unmute you and you can ask your question to the group or just type it into the uh, question panel or the chat panel. Um, see if there's any other questions that have come in during the presentation. Um, and for those of you that might, you know, if, if you've never looked at ZoomText Mac before, if you're wondering where you can get a trial version of it, um, you can just go to our website. So if you go to um, our home page, I'm not going to sorry, that might help. Go to AISquared.com. Uh, right on the home page here, there's a link that says ZoomText Mac. Here, if you click that, there's a link on the left-hand navigation bar that says ZoomText Mac Trial. And you can download a free 30-day trial right from our website. Okay. Oops. Other questions? Um, Ty just had a question. The copy link shortcut is a neat tool. If you have a daily blog you use, I suppose it would automatically read uh, the day's content. Yeah, if that URL that you were pasting in was updated, um, then definitely you could, you know, you could do that. Um, another thing I'll just ask you guys as a group. I mean, we'd like to hear your feedback as well. Uh, not necessarily, you know, questions you might have on the feature, but what you think of it what you like, maybe what you don't like, what you'd like to see us add. Um, Michael asked if the trial has the reader. Um, currently it does not. If you recall, I mentioned that we were going to be launching this in July or August. So you're really getting an early sneak peek of this feature. Um, but we will have it available in the trial, and it will be available in the product versions as well uh, once we release our next update. So it will come across as an update that you can download. Um, it is a beta version that you'll be able to um, evaluate for a limited time, probably 30 days. So uh, you might want to wait if you haven't purchased the product and you want to look at the trial. You might want to wait until we fully release it uh, so you can have the full 30 days to evaluate it. And again, it is, you know, it's still um, currently in development. The beta of this reading tool will be in the trial once we release it. We don't have a release date. Uh, again, like I said, July or August. So right now you can't get it. Um, it's still in development. But believe me, you'll know once we release it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I send out emails, as you probably noticed, frequently. So uh, as soon as it's actually in the, the product and the trials, we will certainly be emailing everybody about it. Um, yeah, Ty made a good suggestion. He said, uh, below the reading read option in the program menu, a button to provide feedback or a way to do that. Um, that That's a good suggestion. I think the only issue with that is we might, uh, might encounter issues if people don't have their uh, email client set up on the machine. I'm not sure what that would do, but uh, definitely a good idea to have an easy way to provide feedback so people can just type it in as they're using the tool. Now another thing too, I'll just you know pose some questions to the group. Um, you know, do you like what this reading tool is doing? How it's taking just the article information? Is that something that's important? Is that something that people struggle with uh, with Zoom Text, for example? Because this is a little bit different than what we do with App Reader and Doc Reader. Those tools are going to read everything on the web page, whereas this is just going to extract the article text. Um, and I guess my question would be, is that something that that you guys have wanted? Is it something that you're going to find helpful? Um, we'd love to hear your feedback on what you think on about how the tool works. <laughs> Ty said that he will probably use his Mac now to read the paper instead of the PC. That's excellent. Um, John said, as, as an AT pro, he thinks his clients will really use this feature. That's great. And uh, Michael thinks it's an efficient way to work. Tracy thinks it's a great feature. So it sounds like you guys really like what we've done here, which is, which is excellent. Um, 
And I'm noticing, I don't know if folks have logged out and they're coming back in, but I noticed a couple people just logged in. Um, the webinar actually started at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So if you did miss it, uh, we will be providing a recorded version um, that you can view on our website. We're just about at the tail end here and, and uh, getting feedback from the group on what they thought about the feature. Um, how about some other questions to see what people think of it? If, if you're using this tool on a day-to-day -day basis, um, are you more inclined to use the full screen view or would you use the windowed mode, uh, which you don't have to visually be looking at the entire time when you're listening to it? What mode do you think you'd prefer to use, full screen or the windowed view? Um, and while we're waiting for questions there, Tolliver, it looks like you have your hand up again, so I'll go ahead and unmute you. Go ahead, Tolliver. Yeah, uh, my, my question was uh, kind of not related to this particular feature, but uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to know uh, uh, how much progress are, are you making with uh, the ZT for Windows 8? Uh, uh, has that been released yet? Um, that's a good question, and I think a lot of people on here are curious about that as well. Um, we're getting close. The answer, the honest answer, is we're getting close to an official release. Um, there are still some outstanding issues that we want to resolve before we release it uh, as a as a for sale product. Um, so we have a beta version available on our website that you can download now. Um, I don't know what our expectation is as far as a release date goes, but I'm thinking it's it's sometime within the next, I don't know, I don't want to go on record with anything here, but um, it's probably a few weeks away, and um, certainly there will be more information on that as we get closer. I think we also have a webinar scheduled at the end of next month where we're going to show Zoom text in Windows 8 and some of the new features. And I just wanted to add, too, we do have a free Windows 8 beta version that I mean, it, it's gotten quite good, I think. I mean, we're very near to a release, so we do okay. have that version up. You just have to go to aisquared.com slash Windows 8, and you can get it that way. So if you have a Windows 8 machine and you need something now, um, you certainly can use that for free, and it will be free until we release the final version. Uh, uh, one more question. Uh, would that be available on tablets? Um, if you have a Surface Pro, okay, which is basically like a full, um, a full PC and a tablet, that right. will work with ZoomText. They, they have another version of the Surface called the RT, which just mm -hmm. runs apps from the Windows Store, kind of like a mobile phone or an iPhone. ZoomText can't run in that environment, but it can run in the full, um, the full Windows 8 operating system. And it will have touch screen support as well. So that's a brand new feature that we'll have. Ooh, um, right. It's really going to be nice for those devices. Um, touch screen support will only be in Windows 8. So for those of you that are still in Win 7, uh, touch support will only be in Windows 8. Uh, so that, is, that is coming. Go ahead, Ty. Or um, Tolliver. Uh, if I could, could I get you to demonstrate the, uh, the uh, full screen uh, versus sure. the Windows mode again? Yep. So um, with the reading tool, there's basically two different views. The windowed mode where Zoom Text is magnifying all of the applications um, on your desktop. So I can still see my dock. I can see other applications, like I've got Safari open here. And here is the Zoom Text reading window. Now, while this is reading, okay, if I click play, Visually, I'm not going to see anything about my view change. Zoom text is in, once it gets to the next paragraph of text, Zoom text won't automatically move its view to that information. So what it's reading is most likely going to be outside of my view. I won't be able to see it all at one time. But in the full screen mode, we basically turn off magnification, and all we're looking at is the reading window and all the text that's in that reading window. So in this mode, there's no other applications, um, and you're able to see all of the content that's being read. So that's the difference between the two. It's kind of like Doc Reader. The full screen mode looks like Doc Reader, 
Uh, the windowed mode is if you had a doc reader application window on top of any, everything else. So there's pluses and minuses, I think, to both. But my question was when people are, you know, if, if you're going to a website and you want Zoom text to read it back to you, um, are you more apt to be looking at it in the full screen view or are you more apt to just leave it kind of running in the background in the windowed view and, uh, you know, maybe go about other tasks like you could using background reader on the PC? Um, you know, we'd really like to get an understanding as to how people uh, might use this tool because there's, it seems like there's people on both sides of the um, of the fence. Some people might want to visually look at it while it's reading and really pay attention, and there's others that might just listen to it. I think it depends on the individual. So um, that question is really more out of curiosity than anything, and uh, probably understanding what should be the default mode for this tool. Should it come up in the full screen mode first time you launch it? Should it come up in the windowed mode the first time you launch it? And those are some of the things that we're um, trying to figure out what would be most appropriate for everyone. Okay. Let's see, a um, few other questions trickling in. Um, Ty said that you'd be better off migrating to the Mac instead of using Windows 8. <laughs> Windows 8 is definitely a very different experience. Um, I, for one, am not a huge fan of their start screen. I like some of the things that they've done, but taking away the start button, um, you know, for someone that's technical and knows where everything is is one thing. For people that are new to computers and get used to something, it's a bigger, much bigger uh, hurdle to overcome. So I think Windows 8 is going through a bit of some growing pains, but um, I think Microsoft will get there eventually. <laughs> it's just kind of ugly right now. Um, let's see. Ty said that he would like the windowed mode better uh, and just pull the reading sections when needed as he goes through different pages, drag and drop or copy and paste. So that's how he would use it. Um, Aaron likes the full screen mode. And um, some good feedback. Yeah, one thing, one of the recent questions in here, I think this is worth bringing up. Yeah. So when you make changes to how you want your text to be displayed, whether it's the highlight color or the text size or anything like that, the next time you use it, even if you've shut down um, Zoom text back and reopened it, it's going to come up exactly like that again. So you don't have to go in and fix it all again. Yeah, so any of those settings that I showed you, like the text size, the highlighted text size, all those are saved automatically. Okay. And is it also saved if you exit out when it's in full screen mode, the next time you pull it up, is it in full screen, or are you not sure? Uh, let's see. That's a good question. I close the window. And I open it with the hotkey. Retrieving content. Yep. Yep. Making accessibility simple. Thank you for your interest in Zoom text for Windows 8. And you might have heard that tone. So um, we're changing that sound effect, so don't worry. It sounds like a gong or like a church bell going off or something. But um, sometimes there might be a delay in retrieving the content from the page. So we just give you an audible cue that it's working. Um, usually it's almost instantaneous, but some pages it might take longer to retrieve uh, the, the, um, the active content. Okay? Um, so as Becca was saying, yeah, it retains your settings and even what view mode you are in, whether it's full screen or uh, the non-full screen mode. Um, it'll save all of that. But definitely one of the things, too, is you know, feel free to send us information, especially once you guys, or feedback, rather, once you guys uh, get a chance to look at the beta when it's out, things like um, you know you can draw a frame around the text. Um, if you look in the background here, I turned the frame off. It was a black frame around that text. Let me go to making accessibility simple. So, oops, why that did that? But making accessible. Okay. Um, so you can draw a frame around that orange block. So you've got a black frame. You could have other colors. Um, obviously, white is not a good setting here, but any feedback you guys have about color and schemes um, would definitely be greatly appreciated. These are really kind of placeholders. I mean, you're not going to want to have a background color of black because then you won't be able to see anything. Um, so, and again, any feedback that you might have in terms of colors, um, we didn't really 
uh, go through a whole iterative process on picking these colors. We just threw some in there and really wanted to get some feedback from people on what they might like or think would be useful. Let's see. Any other questions that you saw come in, Becca, that would be good? Um, one of the common requests is to have a hot key to toggle between yep. screen and window, which is definitely something that we're going to get before I think we have the data yep. out. Yeah, and there I saw another question, too, that somebody asked how I'm switching between the modes, the full screen and the window. There's this shrink and expand button in the upper right-hand corner of the reading window. And if you click that, it'll toggle between full screen and I don't know what you call the non-screen, well, windowed mode, I guess, is the best way to put it. But So there is a button there. Um, there will likely be a setting in the, in the Zoom Text Preferences panel, too, um, where you can choose what you want the default behavior to be, full screen or windowed. Um, it's not in there at the current time, but we'll probably add one in there. And like Becca said, also a hotkey for that. Um, to make that a little bit easier for people. And definitely, uh, Michael made a comment about um, background colors. Um, I think that's another thing uh, that we need to put in as a feature request is the ability to change the background. Um, luckily, the way that we've developed this tool, it, it's pretty flexible, so there's a lot of things that we can do with it um, without expending a massive amount of effort. So. Um, I think this is really going to uh, evolve pretty dynamically um, as people get it. I mean, you'll see the beta here uh, in the coming months, but after that, once we've uh, had a full release, I think it will be even better after we've captured a lot of feedback. All right. Any other questions for us here today? And, and again, for those folks that might have come in late or missed some of it, this is being recorded, so we'll post it on our website, um, which will be a YouTube video that you can watch us at any time and go through uh, any of the presentation here for, for today. And I'll mention, too, um, while we're waiting to see if there's any other questions, if you have any follow-up questions about today's webinar, maybe you thought of something afterwards, you just had a follow-up question, um, you can always email us. Our email address is learning at AISquared.com. So that's how you can reach uh, either Becca or myself uh, if you have any questions related to the webinars. And like I mentioned earlier, um, Tolliver was asking about Windows 8. We've got a couple brand new webinars coming up. Um, the next one is Zoom Text for Windows 8, right? Yeah. Okay, so we've got one next month uh, about Zoom Text and Windows 8. And then I believe we have another one in August about Image Reader and the different document output formats. Um, so we're kind of changing up our webinar schedule a little bit. Uh, we realize that people are pretty busy in the summertime. And uh, we've also got some other, um, other opportunities in regards to training that we're going to be launching uh, in the next few weeks here. Some of you may have read in our Zoom News article um, that we're going to be launching a certification program for Zoom Text. So uh, that's another thing coming down the pipe. And we'll be talking about all of our training opportunities uh, in another webinar. Um, so everything that we're doing here, our webinars, our in-person trainings, and our soon-to-be uh, certification program is under this umbrella of Zoom Text University. So we're also going to have a webinar talking about all those offerings that we're doing now and uh, how you can get involved with that as well. Okay, so even though everyone's on vacation in the summer, we're still keeping pretty busy here. <laughs> All right, any other questions here for us today uh, before we end the webinar? And uh, I want to thank you guys again for uh, signing in and checking out the webinar. Um, hopefully you really enjoyed getting a, an early look at this feature and are pretty excited about it. It sounds like it. Um, Tolliver asked, how soon will the certification program will be available? Uh, soon. <laughs> Next month. Uh, sooner rather than later. It's, uh, we're on the tail end of things, so 
Um, that will be coming up here pretty shortly. Um, I'm hoping within three weeks, I'll say that. Does this hand up? Oh, Tolliver, you had your hand up, so go ahead and unmute you. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I wanted to know, uh, when, with the uh, certification program, uh, will it cover the entire ZoomText program across the board or just uh, for uh, particular platforms? Um, right now, it's just going to pretty much encapsulate the PC product and anything okay. related to ZoomText on the PC, like ZoomText camera and image reader. Um, we'll have more details about that shortly, but just to tell you guys if, if some of you might be interested as well, um, you know, the exam, pretty much all the information from the exam you can find either on our website, in the help system of the products, um, or in our webinars. So it's not like, uh, it's not like you need a four-year degree to take the exam. Um, <laughs> if you're a ZoomText user and you know how to find information, um, you know, you, you, you have a very good shot at passing this exam uh, without much effort. Um, so we'll have more information about that once it launches, but um, I, I think it's a pretty compelling program that, that people will like, and it's an ability to test your, your knowledge on the product um, and be able to, you know, take that certification once, uh, once you pass it and, you know, put it on your resume, put it on your, uh, any business documents or communication that you use. Um, and things like that. So um, it's a pretty cool program, and like I said, hopefully in the next few weeks here, once we have the official launch, we'll uh, we'll be sending lots of information about that out. Is the uh, is the exam available now? Not yet. No, we're still oh, okay. developing it, kind of as we speak. Okay, but you uh, you have some of the exam content available. Um, not publicly. I mean, we're right now we're developing it and um, doing some internal uh, rounds of feedback on it. So nothing is available currently um, to the public. So oh, okay. once we're ready, okay. once we're ready to launch, the information will be out there. It'll tell you what you know what categories of information are covered on the test and things like that. Um, right. Right. Like I said, it's it's not going to be like taking your SATs or something like that where you need to study for weeks on end. Um, it's multiple choice or true-false questions. No essays, so don't worry about having to write essays. We didn't <laughs> want to have to grade essays. So, um, yeah, like I said, we'll, uh, we'll have much more information on that pretty soon here. So um, if you're interested in that and you're here in today's webinar, um, please shoot us an email, learning at AISquared.com, and we'll get you on a list to be the first ones to, to know about it. Um, okay. And that will be helpful for us, too. All right. Um, any other last-minute questions for us here today before we end the webinar? All right, and again, um, if you think of something afterwards, just didn't get a chance to ask it or maybe had trouble finding the questions panel, feel free to email us at learning at AISquared.com, and I would be glad to answer any other questions you might have. All right, doesn't look like there's any other questions, so thank you guys for attending today, and uh, again, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, have a great rest of the afternoon. Take care.